Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to hook up your EA Play so that it runs through Steam so you can use your Nintendo Switch Pro Controller when you play EA games because it's using the Steam drivers rather than hoping that the games you play on EA have support for the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. So the first thing you gotta do, make sure EA's app slash launcher is completely logged out and turned off on your PC. That way we can add it to Steam and it can take control and launch it through Steam. And the other thing we need to do is get our controller hooked up to our computer so that it is running on the computer and we can use it to play. So let's start by connecting the Pro Controller. You're gonna to wanna to open up the Bluetooth and other devices list on your computer. You can just search for Bluetooth and this little uh, window should pop up as an option. And then once this is open, we're going to pair our controller with our computer wirelessly. You don't really have the option to plug this in because for whatever reason, even though it does detect that the controller is connected, it doesn't always wanna use it correctly when it's plugged in, if at all. So we're just gonna do this wirelessly because that behaves itself more often than not. So to do that, you might notice that there is a button on the top where you plug in the controller to charge, press and hold on that for like, I don't know, six seconds, or until the lights at the bottom of the controller that show which one it is connected to the switch, one through four, start to light up and dance. Once it does, you can pair this bad boy by clicking on the Add Bluetooth or Other Device button here at the top of this window. And then inside this pop-up, click Bluetooth. And then as long as the lights on the bottom of your controller are dancing, you should see your Pro Controller pop up on this list. I also notice that I have other things in this list that I don't recognize, which is always amazing when you're doing a tutorial that you find bonus things on your network. So after a moment, once Windows figures out what it wants to do with it, it should pop up in this list to tell you that it's connected, so we're good. But just to be sure, it doesn't hurt to go to your Steam window, the upper left-hand corner, click Steam, and then go to Settings. From here, you can go to the Controller section in the left-hand sidebar full of all these little tabs full of other sections of Settings. And then here, it'll tell you at the top, this is your Switch Pro Controller, Unless you manually named this something else in the past, like um, Jerry, in which case this might be called Jerry. And then you can do things like enable rumble, use the Nintendo button layout when possible. Um, that kind of depends on if the game has some support for tweaking of buttons, but most of them don't unless they have native support for other controllers in the first place. Um, but what you really want is to make sure that Steam input is enabled for Switch Pro controllers, and if for whatever reason your controller is behaving like a mouse and keyboard when it shouldn't, you can go down to Desktop Layout, click Edit, and under this option here, you can switch from the official layout for desktop configuration to Disabled, so it disables all the desktop configuration bindings so it doesn't try to act like a mouse and keyboard when it's not supposed to, which is in game. So otherwise we can just close that because that's clearly working. Now we need to get the EA app added to our Steam library, which is more of a pain in the rear than other apps for some reason. So to do this, we're gonna go to our library section, which I've already clicked on here. And at the top of the screen, or not, well, the top of this window, just above library is a button called games. Click on that. There's an add non Steam game to my library button. Click on that, and it's going to bring up a big long list of all of the software that is currently installed on your computer. Now, if we're lucky, the EA Desktop app will appear in this list. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing that here. Just the app recovery option and the error reporter. So we're going to have to click browse and do this the old fashioned way. So mine is located under my computer, local disk C, program files, electronic arts, 
EA Desktop, EA Desktop, and it's the EA Desktop app right here. But if we want to navigate that manually, in the sidebar, go to this PC, go to your local disk C, go to Program Files, find Electronic Arts, EA Desktop, EA Desktop, and then once again, EA Desktop. And then add that. And then it should be selected now in your list of games. Go ahead and click Add Selected. And that's over here in the sidebar. I don't know why it doesn't show up in the program list. A lot of the other ones do, but this one doesn't. So now when we launch that bad boy, it should properly launch the EA app with whatever account was previously logged into it. And then bingo, bango, boom. Here's my app with all of my friends in it. So just to show you that it works, let's go ahead and click on Dead Space and launch the game. Now, once you launch the game, you'll know the controller is working and recognizes that a game is booting because the blue ring around the home button will light up. Mine just did. So that's a good sign. That means things are working. So here I am moving around in the game using my Switch Pro controller, and it's actually surprisingly snappy. I actually haven't used this a lot yet, but it works as well as one would expect. You can access your menus and everything. So yeah, that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This has been how to boot the EA Play app through Steam so that you can use whatever controller you want. It works for Switch. It, it can technically work for the Joy-Cons, but I wouldn't recommend it because they're super laggy, but you do have that option. It'll also work for PlayStation controller and PlayStation 4 and 5. Uh, and probably also three, but I haven't tested play PS3 controllers, but I've got one in the closet somewhere. So maybe I'll do that in the future. But yeah, so I hope you found this helpful. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.